What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to another episode of the Three Gs. It's saying the Fuji's, it's saying the BGs, it's the Three Gs. Three generations of entrepreneurship coming at you from my grandfather, my dad, and yours truly. Uh, well, how how are you doing? Am I right? I said it's uh, coming from you, from my pitaji, which is your granddad. What does that actually mean, pitaji? My dad. Okay, cool. It's just a respectful way. Say. So, so we, we started this podcast to give back. We're excavating our heritage. I'm really enjoying that phrase. Uh, and our ancestry. Well, we're using it. Yes. But by doing this, we're, we're revisiting what we got from my granddad who came to this country, couldn't speak English, uh, started a bunch of businesses. He was told he couldn't rent a property because no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Um, went through a bunch of adversity and gave, paved the way for us to, to be able to do what we're doing here. If it wasn't for him, none of this would be possible. Yeah. Now today I've got quite the topic. You ready? Buckle up, cowboy. This ain't this. This is gonna be a fun ride for you, and and everyone watching. Um, so let let me ask a question. You ever seen adverts from universities on TV or YouTube or anything like that? Adverts. Yeah, like the you know university of whatever advertising to. Yeah, I have. Yeah, and do you ever hear a university advert that goes like this? Hey, stupid! Are you struggling to get a job? Well, you better come to our university so you can get the skills to go and get a job. Do you ever hear them advertise that? Never. Why? Maybe too truthful. <laughs> That's rude. No, you do, uh, in my opinion, yeah, universities, yes, it is a business. Let's, let's, not, let's not hide away from the fact that the university is a business. Now, I've got very strong negative opinions about it, but I'm going to park that for today's episode. I want to highlight what universities are doing very well that every business owner can learn from. Okay. So the university doesn't come at you with, hey, I'm gonna turn up the heat on you and try and pressure you into taking one of my spaces for this super expensive course. That, look at this, they're selling you something you can't even see. It's intangible, they're not guaranteeing you shit. And look at, look at what they're doing so well. They got one word that they're obsessed with and it starts with F, let's see if you can guess it. F, one word. Finance? No. Future. Oh, okay. They're marketing to students based on an invisible future that they might not even get. It's exactly the same for coaches. Oh, all, okay. all we're doing is helping people to create a future that they want to live into. Same with universities, just in a very different capacity. The university is like, look, I'll use myself as an example, right? My commitment level at university was like, here, basically fuck all non-existent other people on my course there was this chick i can't remember what her name was yeah dad you, th you any time you see her she would have some kind of notes in front of her i once i once walked to kfc with her she was talking about oh this lecture and that lecture i was like you need to chill out anyway like her commitment level was up here and mine was down here right we're paying the same amount of money for the same course but we're enrolled in a different future She's enrolled in her future up here. That's the commitment level. I'm enrolled in my future down here. I didn't give a shit. I understand. What's the point? So universities are not selling us our spaces. They are enrolling us into a future that we have to be committed to creating. Same with coaches. If we, we, in my opinion, I, I don't think anyone should be selling anyone a hard sell. Like, hey, you know, if you don't do this coaching with me, then your life's going to be fucked. It, sh it should be, I don't like using the word should, but it, okay, let me say it could be instead. Hey, you're saying that you, you want to have a great relationship with your partner. Yeah? That's the future you want to create. Let's, let's work together on the possibility of what that could be for you. Let's spend some time together looking at that. That's what you're going to be buying from me. My ca your, the capacity that you're going to be, uh, not the capacity, yeah, the capacity of the role of the coach is how enrolled and committed is my client to creating that future. Universities, they're not, they have criteria. You gotta get the grades. You gotta move down here. It, it, it's very selective. This is what we're talking about in the last episode, right? One second. In the last episode, we're talking about be selective with your clients, don't chase the money. Now universities, yes, they've got people applying and all of that shit. I love what, the, what we can take from them as entrepreneurs, as coaches especially, have a criteria for selection. Have a criteria for who you will and won't take on. Have people earn their spaces with you. And this isn't a coach thing or, oh, 
I charge 30 grand, so that's why I can be selective. If you charge 50 pounds or less, this still applies to you. If you're charging 100 pounds for 20 sessions, I don't care. It's the same concept, same principle applies. Have people earn their spot with you and not as some jumping the hoops bullshit like um, assignment thing. It's not like a, a, um, a blanket cover thing. It's like co-create agreements with people so that they come into the process already enrolled. So they're like, yo, I'm here like that chick with the notes all the time. I want clients like that. But I want to, first of all, you should not, universities are still building blocks for education, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But also for some people it works, some people it doesn't. But here the big difference is they're doing it on a mass scale, you're doing it in a one-to-one. -one. So it's more easier for you to have those relationships. But for a lecturer, it's harder to you know, resonate with everyone. There is a selection process for the university. You have to have the grades. You have to have the finance. So in a way, they are selecting it, but not on a one-to-one -one basis what you're offering. But the analogies I understand, but it's still a business. Yeah. It's still a business, but I think you doing it individually rather than a mass, which the universities can't do individually. Maybe they should, I don't know. Maybe that's the way forward. They'll get better grades, etc. I don't know. But the demonstration is the same. It's still a business. It's still selective, but you're in charge. And so are they. They can I, choose. I really like this analogy. I'm going to stick with it for a bit. The, the universities thing is really interesting because like, look, if, if we look at universities compared to, I don't know, let's say like, I don't know, someone in an industry that's giving you a hard sell. I don't feel like the university gives a shit about anything enough to give you a hard sell. Mm. Like you said, they're mass marketing, right? Yeah. They've got people coming to them. Now, as a, as a coach who's only doing small one-on-one, -on -one, you know, small numbers one-on-one, -on -one, right? I'm not mass marketing to anyone. And I'm willing to get on the phone with everyone who says they want something. It's like, you know, the course uh, people at the university, the, the people who are in charge of admissions, right? They'll talk to you. They'll, you, they'll get on the phone with you. And their criteria, their selection process is rock solid. You don't make the grades, you don't get in. We'll talk to you, we'll spend time with you, but you know, we might tell you to apply next year. That's the same for me. Now, I had someone ask me recently, what can we do for a thousand pounds? I said, right, I'm prepared to do this with you. You come to my intensive, give you a couple of sessions, or you can go and hire this coach, do six months with them, then come back to me after that. That's, that's my way of being like, um, reciprocating the good in the world. I think uh, you've got a holistic approach where the universities haven't, they can only offer what they have. They cannot go around recommending because they've got different criteria. So that's where your business is different. But I understand what you're saying. You have to basically have some connection with the people you want to talk to, whether it's positive or negative, but at least there should be some connection, which I understand. And also it, it's the slowing down. <clears throat> That's yeah. really what I want to hit on the, on the head with this topic, right? You know, I never believed you until I actually put it into practice because why am I taking so many instructions? Why don't I just select? Instead of having 20 instructions, why don't I just keep 10? I've got a more better chance of selling those rather than the 20 because I'm giving more attention, I'm being more potent and therefore more successful. And if you say to people, Hey, by the way, Jeff, just so you know, yeah, we only take 10 instructions a month or a week, whatever it is. For they you. are impressed. It, fuck the impressed. It's, it's important for them to understand. Number one, getting a high quality of yeah, service. Number I'm two, I'm, you, not just anyone can sell their property through you. And I think it's the same for me. Like I'll say to people, hey, just so you know, yeah, if we do this, I only take on 20 clients a year, maximum, right? That's number one. Number two, there's going to be books to read. Do you, do you like reading? You're going to have to start liking it, bro, because that's how you're going to get the most out of this coaching. Number three, do you like doing homework? Because you're about to get a lot of it. Do you like getting rejection? Because you're about to go and talk to a bunch of people. You know, like one of, these, one of my clients, he hired me to help him get more confident talking to women, right? And I said to him, you sure you want this? Yeah, he goes, yeah. I said, right, we're going to go to central London. We're going to go to Oxford Street and we're going to stop women in the street in a respectful manner and talk to them. It's not going to be no dirty talk, pick up lines, bullshit, yeah? You're going to go and start real conversations with real women on the street. And you're going to ask them, how was your day? I like what you're wearing. Can I get your phone number? I'd like to hang out with you one day. Something like that, yeah? It's not a script, but he goes, oh, I don't want to do that. I said, good. Then this isn't, don't spend your money here. Go, go speak to someone else first. Do something else first, then come back to this later. There's a selection criteria, and I'm not doing it from an ego place. I'm doing it to look out for people. 
That's the big difference here. This is what my granddad, I feel like what my granddad was on, looking out for people, it will come back to me. But I think you're demonstrating uh, a situation like coaching is going to be awkward moments. But the thing is, if you don't go through them and you're not prepared to invest that time and money and action them, information to transformation, what is the use? Yeah. That's it. That, that would be like someone like saying a, to you. It was similar to what my dad said. Oh, he did that valuation. What did they say? And there was silence. <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't ask them anything. I lost the instruction. But he said, why did you lose it? Mm. I said, I don't know. He goes, you didn't get into that conversation. And he rang the guy back. He said, oh, well, the others offered a better rate. And also, instead of four months, they offered two months. So I made a note. And lo and behold, two months later, I get the instruction. Four months later, they moved. But had my dad not told me that, I would have been too sheepish to go back. But sometimes you have to take it on the chin. You have to understand that this is what the client wanted. You didn't deliver it. So are you going to live and learn or are you just going to spurn the moment and say, forget it, I'm not going to do anything with this? But that, that's ego. Yeah, and this, it is, this it is. You know, with my yeah. first coach, right? Da the incredible Dan Warburton. Shout out to you, Dan. I don't know if you watch these episodes, but much respect. Dan said something to me that changed my life forever. He goes, such an it's cool to have people pay Others you. Others get a haircut. Oh, yeah, I did have long hair back then and a fat beard. He loved it, though. He said it was a good look. Um, he, he said to me, it's all well and good to have people pay you for coaching, but are they doing the work? Not just the work inside the sessions. Are they doing something outside of that? Are they actually going to read the book? Are they actually going to go and talk to people? Are they going to start their business? But I think there's a difference between commitment and non-committal. So if you want to do something, like my dad used to say, you've got to do it from the heart. If you're going to dilly-dally, that's where you're going to end up, dilly-dallying around and not getting anywhere. If you don't have that focus, you don't have that drive, you're not going to make it, boy. And that's what happened in the city. I liked it at the beginning, but I didn't like the people, didn't like the environment, and it just totally crushed me. But I, I had to change that environment. My dad, when I went back to him, said, I quit. He goes, it took you two years? So he knew that I wouldn't like it. But the thing is, I thought it was a good fit, but my dad knew that once I've been in my own business, I've been in, in that environment of sole trader, my dad was so then he became a company, blah, blah. It rubs off on you. And he always said to me that magic thing, being in business is a privilege, son, and don't you bloody forget it. And that still in my head, I'm saying to you, it's a privilege what you're doing and don't spoil it and don't take it for granted because mm. not everybody can do it. But you've got to cherish that, embrace it, and then go out with it because that's your personality. Because if you can grow from negativity, which is what we discussed earlier about your zero plus, I actually, that was a watershed moment. I actually understood what you said and why you called it zero plus. But if you can take those negative vibes and turn them into positive vibes and improve your personality, your capability of doing things, then you're on the right track. But if you haven't got those attributes, and you're not prepared to invest time in those negative things becoming positive, then forget it. This is why I credit my coaches a lot. Ankush, Keith, um, Johnny, um, the Steves, you know, like, I credit these coaches a lot because I I don't, I wouldn't be able to do the thing, like, you, you've seen me, I go head on into things, I just do stuff, like, I take event action quickly, soon as, remember, I booked my retreat within five days of Select. having the idea. I booked this intensive within two days of having the idea. I do these things because I've got that coaching under my belt. I've done a lot of the grounding work to see, okay, even if this doesn't work out, I've got my mindset on it. Like I've, I can still run with it. I can still thrive. And this is why I'd say to you, a lot of business owners, not just coaches, but a lot of business owners, if you're, if, if you're finding it hard to keep going when things when people aren't signing up with you and all this other stuff it's been a year might have been two years five years whatever it is if you invest in coaching and you don't just talk about the business you might talk about your relationship with your partner it might be about your mindset being defeatist or not seeing opportunities that coaching is just like 20,000 times more valuable than looking at the strategy of your business it would be like you know if you uh, I said this <clears> to one of my friends he goes to me when we were just starting out. I don't know, you might know who this person is. Uh, he was very negative about me starting my coaching business. He goes, oh, who's going to pay you to do that? Why, why are you doing these videos again? 100 views, why are you doing it? And I said to him, hey man, like, 
I'm just keeping a positive mind frame while I'm doing this stuff, testing out, see what works. He goes, well, don't do it. It's not working, so just give up. And it's the real stark contrast between someone who's in a fixed mindset, someone who's in a growth mindset. It's a very easy concept for everyone to get, right? Fixed means that's it. This is just the way the world is. I know that nothing will happen. Knowing is the enemy of learning. Growth mindset, I don't know shit. Let me go and find some stuff out. I think the simple reply to that, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and all great things started with the belief they could be done. Yeah. Now, I'm not really a fan of belief. I think it's, it's, it can get a bit heady and we can get into some mental masturbation conversations again. I'm not into it. But what I am into is success leaves clues. So it, if someone else has done it, they've got two hands and a brain just like me or sometimes less than that. Why can't I? Why can't I is the most important question ever. I'm going to say that one more time because it felt good. Why can't I is one of the most important questions ever. I think that's just uh, like, you know, questioning yourself whether you want to do it or don't. Why can't I? I mean, that's actually challenging yourself. Yeah, challenging our thinking because our thinking isn't what, fixed. It's what Sammy said earlier. He said, I've learned something from such. And I said, well, he goes, I'm challenging myself. Sounded like Muhammad Ali. But it, and this is what I don't people want people to get the wrong idea about. It's not a challenge in yourself like, yeah, I'm going to have a thousand conversations in a year. It's not that kind of challenge. I think it's mentally it, as it's well. It's a challenging of what do I think is true and is that actually true with a capital T. Capital T truth is like what goes up must come down. We know that it's a capital T truth. What subjective T, small T truth is... Is the rate I, it comes down. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> or it's like the, 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 the small T truth is how I feel. That's not actually capital T truth. Are you trying to relate it to Newton or something? You want to hit him on the head? No. But that, that's something that I think is really important for all of us, like challenging what we think is true. Like some people think, oh, if I don't do this thing, then something bad is going to happen. That's a small T truth. It, might, it probably isn't true. That's superstition, I think. Or it's just regular stition. How about that? You like that? You like that joke? That's a nice joke to end on. How about that, ladies and gents? Tell me what you thought of the stition joke. Or we're not giving you any more of these episodes. How about that? How about that for a ransom? Comment below. Otherwise, we're not going to release the next episode. <laughs> if you were handsome, we'd be in trouble. All right. Anyway, I've got a funny joke. I'll tell you off the air. Um, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We're having a lot of fun doing these episodes. And we'd like to hear your opinions. And what do you want us to talk about next? I'm happy to keep rolling out these topics and... Uh, d breaking down the conversations I'm having and delivering the learnings to you. But what do you want us to talk about? You got questions? You got? Yeah, were you? I was talking to some of the people that you invited to your birthday, and uh, they asked me a few questions, but we can answer them in the next episode. Cool. We'll do that. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next episode. Peace. And tranquility.